Here are a few signs you are the new poor. 1. You squirm at the mention of finances, yet you're a pro at stalking wealthy celebrities' Instagrams. The age-old conundrum. You're more familiar with the latest celebrity drama than you are with your own bank balance. It's like you've got a PhD in social media stalking, but a kindergarten-level understanding of personal finance. Don't worry, my friend. You're not alone. In fact, you might just be the poster child for the new poor. The ones who can spot a designer handbag from a mile away, but couldn't tell you the difference between a stock and a bond. It's a curious phenomenon, really. You can rattle off the net worth of every Kardashian-Jenner clan member. But when it comes to your own financial situation, it's like you've got a mental block the size of Kim K's closet. You'd rather spend hours scrolling through Instagram, drooling over the lavish lifestyles of the rich and famous, than actually take a good, hard look at your own spending habits. But hey, you're not the only one. In this age of social media and constant comparison, it's all too easy to get caught up in the illusion of wealth and success. We're bombarded with images of people living their best lives, jetting off to exotic locations and sipping champagne on yachts. And it's only natural to feel a twinge of envy. After all, who doesn't want to live like a celebrity? The problem is, of course, that the reality is often quite different from the carefully curated image we see on our screens. Those wealthy influencers and celebrities? They've got teams of financial advisors and accountants making sure their money keeps rolling in. Meanwhile, you're over here struggling to keep your head above water, wondering how on earth you're going to afford that avocado toast you just ordered. You see, the Stoics had a thing or two to say about this whole money versus mindfulness dilemma. As the wise Seneca once said, wealth is the slave of the wise man and the master of the fool. In other words, if you're more concerned with keeping up with the Kardashians than keeping your finances in check, you might just be the fool in this scenario. But fear not, my fellow financial novice. The Stoics also believed that the path to true wealth lies not in the accumulation of material possessions, but in the cultivation of inner strength and self-discipline. As Marcus Aurelius so eloquently put it, the universe is change. Our life is what our thoughts make it. So instead of obsessing over the latest celebrity trends, why not focus on building a solid financial foundation that will truly enrich your life? Now I know what you're thinking, but how do I even begin to get a handle on this whole money thing? Well, the Stoics have got your back. Epictetus, the ancient Greek philosopher, once said, Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. In other words, the key to financial freedom isn't necessarily about earning more, but about learning to want less. So the next time you find yourself scrolling through Instagram, enviously eyeing the latest designer gadgets and gizmos, take a step back and ask yourself, do I really need this? As the Stoic Seneca reminds us, it is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more, that is poor. By embracing the stoic principles of self-discipline, moderation, and a focus on what truly matters, you can start to break free from the shackles of the new poor mentality. After all, as Marcus Aurelius so wisely said, the universe is change. Our life is what our thoughts make it. So why not make your thoughts work for you, rather than against you? 2. Your career path resembles a GPS with a glitch, constantly recalculating. It's like your career path resembles a GPS with a glitch, constantly recalculating and leaving you more lost than a hiker in the Bermuda Triangle. It's a dizzying dance, my friend, and it's leaving you more confused than a cat in a room full of rocking chairs. You've got the job-hopping skills of a professional con artist, but the career stability of a house of cards in a hurricane. One day, you're the CEO of your own startup. The next, you're back to being a barista at the local coffee shop. 
It's like you've got the professional equivalent of a bad case of the zoomies, bouncing from one job to the next, never quite finding that elusive sweet spot. But hey, don't be too hard on yourself. You're not the only one navigating the treacherous waters of the modern job market. In fact, you might just be the poster child for the new poor. The ones who are more familiar with the ins and outs of the unemployment line than they are with the concept of a steady paycheck. It's like you've got a PhD in job hopping, but a kindergarten level understanding of how to actually build a fulfilling career. I mean, let's be real here. You can probably rattle off the latest business trends and startup success stories, but when it comes to your own professional path, it's like you've got a mental block the size of a skyscraper. You'd rather spend hours researching the latest entrepreneurial ventures than actually take a good, hard look at your own skills and passions. But hey, you're not alone in this. In this fast-paced, constantly evolving world, it's all too easy to get caught up in the pursuit of the next big thing, rather than focusing on building a solid career foundation. We're bombarded with stories of overnight success and instant wealth, and it's only natural to feel a twinge of envy. The problem is, of course, that the reality is often quite different from the carefully curated image we see in the media. Those successful entrepreneurs and business leaders, they've got teams of experts and mentors guiding them every step of the way. Meanwhile, you're over here struggling to keep your head above water, wondering how on earth you're going to land that dream job you've been chasing. But how do I break this vicious cycle and finally find my professional footing? Well, the Stoics have got your back, my friend. As the ancient philosopher Seneca once said, it is not the person who has too little, but the one who craves more that is truly poor. In other words, the key to career stability might just lie in learning to want less, rather than constantly chasing after the latest and greatest job opportunities. And let's not forget the sage advice of Marcus Aurelius, who reminds us that the universe is in constant flux and our lives are shaped by the way we respond to it. So, instead of constantly worrying about where your next paycheck is going to come from, why not focus on cultivating a mindset of resilience and adaptability? After all, as the Stoic Epictetus so eloquently put it, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Three. You're in a committed relationship with your student debt and it's getting serious. You're in a committed relationship with your student debt and it's getting serious. It's like you've got a ring on that loan's finger and you're planning the wedding of the century or at least the next few decades. You're in it for the long haul, my friend. And let's be honest, it's not exactly a match made in heaven. I mean, think about it. You're more familiar with your student loan repayment plan than you are with the latest episode of your favorite Netflix binge. It's like you've got a PhD in financial masochism, but a deeper understanding of compound interest than you ever thought possible. But hey, don't feel too bad. You're not the only one who's taken the plunge into the deep, dark abyss of student loans. In fact, you're part of a growing community of debtaholics constantly comparing our interest rates and repayment plans like they're the latest fashion trends. It's a tough gig, my friend, but the good news is you're not alone in this. We're all just a bunch of financial masochists trying to navigate the treacherous waters of adulthood while simultaneously drowning in a sea of debt. It's like we're all part of some secret society bonded by our shared experiences of late-night loan consolidation research and the occasional panic attack over the size of our monthly payments. But hey, at least we can take solace in the fact that we're all in this together, right? And who knows, maybe one day we'll be able to look back on this whole student debt debacle and laugh. Or, you know, cry. Either way, it's sure to be an emotional roller coaster. I know what you're thinking. 
but how do I break free from this vicious cycle of debt and finally start living my best life? Well, the philosophers have got your back, my friend. As the wise Bertrand Russell once said, the fundamental cause of trouble in the world today is that the stupid are cocksure while the intelligent are full of doubt. In other words, the key to financial freedom might just lie in cultivating a healthy dose of skepticism and a willingness to question the status quo. And let's not forget the sage advice of Simone de Beauvoir, who reminds us that one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. So instead of letting your student debt weigh you down and define your every move, why not focus on cultivating a mindset of resilience and adaptability? After all, as the philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre so eloquently put it, existence precedes essence, and in the same way, we are what we make of ourselves. Four, your crew's motto is solidarity in financial mediocrity. Your crew's motto is solidarity in financial mediocrity. It's like you and your friends have formed this little club of the fiscally challenged, bonding over your shared struggles to make ends meet. You're all in the same boat, paddling furiously to stay afloat, while the rest of the world seems to be sailing off into the sunset on their fancy yachts. It's a tough gig, my friends, but at least you've got each other to commiserate with over your lack of disposable income. I mean, let's be real here. You've all mastered the art of creative budgeting, but have a limited understanding of how to actually build wealth. It's like you're experts at splitting the bill at the local dive bar and can spot a designer knockoff from a mile away. But when it comes to actually saving up for that fancy avocado toast you've been eyeing, well, let's just say your financial prowess leaves a bit to be desired. But hey, don't be too hard on yourselves. You're not the only ones in this boat. In fact, you and your financially challenged crew might just be part of a growing community of the fiscally savvy, or, you know, the fiscally challenged. You've created this little support system where you can bond over your shared experiences of skipping meals to pay the rent and constantly searching for the best deals on secondhand goods. Now I know what you're thinking, but how do we break free from this cycle of financial mediocrity and start living our best lives? Well, the Stoics have got your back, my friends. As the ancient philosopher Lao Tzu once said, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. In other words, the key to financial freedom might just lie in taking that first small step towards improving your financial situation. As the Taoist philosopher Chuang Tzu reminds us, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So instead of constantly lamenting your lack of wealth, why not focus on the things you can control? And let's not forget the wise words of the Buddhist teacher, Thich Nhat Hanh, who encourages us to breathe you are alive. In the context of your financial situation, this could mean taking a moment to pause, reflect, and cultivate a sense of gratitude for what you do have, rather than constantly comparing yourself to others. Now, I know it's easier said than done, but the Stoics have a few more tricks up their sleeves when it comes to navigating the world of financial mediocrity. As the Confucian philosopher Mencius once said, it is only when a person's desires are few that the mind can be at peace. In other words, the key to financial freedom might just lie in learning to want less rather than constantly chasing after the latest and greatest material possessions. Five, your skills are as in demand as a VHS player at a streaming party. Your skills are about as in demand as a VHS player at a streaming party. It's like you've got the professional equivalent of a flip phone in a world of iPhones. Your talents are so outdated, they're practically prehistoric. I mean, while everyone else is busy mastering the latest software, coding languages, and digital marketing strategies, you're over here still trying to figure out how to use a fax machine. It's like you've got a PhD in obsolete skills 101, but a limited understanding 
of how to stay relevant in today's job market. You know, it's kind of funny when you think about it. You're the one who can recite the Dewey Decimal System from memory, but the mere mention of cloud computing or blockchain has you scratching your head in confusion. It's like you're stuck in a time warp while the rest of the world is moving at the speed of light. And let's not even get started on your attempts to keep up with the latest tech trends. You're about as tech-savvy as a dinosaur trying to navigate the internet. But hey, you're not alone in this. In fact, you and your friends have formed this little support group where you can commiserate over your lack of marketable talents and dream about the day when your expertise in VCR repair will finally be appreciated. I mean, just imagine it. You're at a party, surrounded by all these tech-savvy millennials, and someone asks you to help them with a computer problem. You step up, ready to dazzle them with your vast knowledge of floppy disks and dot matrix printers, only to be met with a sea of blank stares and confused expressions. It's like you're the digital equivalent of a dinosaur, and everyone else is just waiting for you to go extinct. But how do I stay relevant in this ever-changing job market? Well, the Stoics have got your back, my friend. As the ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus once said, the only constant in life is change. In other words, the key to staying afloat in today's job market might just lie in embracing the uncertainty and adapting to the constant evolution of skills and technologies. And let's not forget the wise words of the Chinese philosopher Confucius, who reminds us that it does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. So instead of beating yourself up over your lack of in-demand skills, why not focus on taking small, consistent steps towards learning something new? After all, as the Roman Stoic philosopher Seneca once said, Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Now, I know it's easier said than done, but the Stoics have a few more tricks up their sleeves when it comes to navigating the ever-changing world of work. As the Greek philosopher Aristotle once observed, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. In other words, the key to professional fulfillment might just lie in cultivating a mindset of continuous learning and self-improvement rather than constantly chasing after the latest and greatest in-demand skills. And let's not forget the wise words of the Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, who reminds us that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So instead of letting your lack of marketable skills define you and hold you back, why not embrace the challenge and see it as an opportunity to grow and adapt? After all, as the Roman Stoic philosopher Epictetus so eloquently put it, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. So, the next time you find yourself feeling like a digital dinosaur in a world of tech-savvy unicorns, Take a deep breath and remember the words of the great philosophers. With a little bit of resilience, a whole lot of self-discipline and a healthy dose of wisdom, you just might be able to turn your situation around. 6. Your investment portfolio consists of hopes, dreams and spare change. Your investment portfolio consists of nothing more than hopes, dreams and the occasional spare change you find wedged between the couch cushions. It's like you've got the financial equivalent of a magic trick up your sleeve, where you can make your savings disappear faster than a rabbit in a top hat, while everyone else is busy diversifying their portfolios and watching their net worth grow like a weed. You're over here scrounging for loose change to put towards your next meal. It's like you've got a PhD in financial wizardry, but a limited understanding of how to actually build wealth. You know, it's kind of funny when you think about it. You're the one who can recite the latest stock market trends and investment strategies, like they're the lyrics to your favorite song. But when it comes to actually putting those skills into practice, 
It's like you've got a mental block the size of a skyscraper. It's like you're stuck in a perpetual state of financial limbo, where your dreams of financial security are as elusive as a unicorn sighting. But hey, you're not alone in this. In fact, you and your friends have formed this little support group where you can commiserate over your lack of investable assets and dream about the day when your spare change will finally add up to something more than a cup of coffee. It's like you've got a secret language where the mere mention of 401k or Roth IRA is enough to elicit a collective groan and a round of sympathetic nods. Now I know what you're thinking, but how do I break free from this cycle of financial scarcity and start building real wealth? Well, the Stoics have got your back, my friend. As the ancient Greek philosopher Epictetus once said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. In other words, the key to financial stability might just lie in cultivating a mindset of resilience and adaptability. As the Roman Stoic philosopher Seneca reminds us, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. So instead of constantly lamenting your lack of investable assets, why not focus on taking small, consistent steps towards improving your financial literacy and exploring new income streams? And let's not forget the wise words of the Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, who encourages us to simplify, simplify, simplify. In the context of your financial situation, this could mean learning to want less, rather than constantly chasing after the latest and greatest material possessions. After all, as the Greek philosopher Aristotle once observed, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. As the Roman Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once wrote, the universe is change, our life is what our thoughts make it. So instead of letting your lack of wealth define you and hold you back, why not embrace the challenge and see it as an opportunity to grow and adapt? And let's not forget the wise words of the Chinese philosopher Confucius, who reminds us that it does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. In other words, the key to financial freedom might just lie in taking small, consistent steps towards building a solid financial foundation rather than trying to achieve overnight success. So the next time you find yourself staring at your meager savings account, take a deep breath and remember the words of the great philosophers. With a little bit of resilience, a whole lot of self-discipline and a healthy dose of wisdom, you just might be able to turn your financial situation around. Seven, carpe diem, more like carpe paycheck. Carpe diem, more like carpe paycheck, am I right? It's like you've got the financial equivalent of ADHD. You're so busy living in the moment and seizing the day that the concept of long-term planning has become as foreign to you as the idea of actually having a retirement account. I mean, while everyone else is busy socking away their hard-earned cash for a rainy day, you're over here living it up, spending your paycheck as soon as it hits your bank account. It's like you've got a PhD in instant gratification, but a limited understanding of how to actually build wealth and secure your financial future. You're the one who can rattle off the latest travel deals and concert tickets like they're the lyrics to your favorite song. But when it comes to actually saving up for a down payment on a house or contributing to your 401k, it's like you've got a mental block the size of a skyscraper. It's like you're stuck in a perpetual state of financial YOLO, where your dreams of financial security are as elusive as a unicorn sighting. And let's not even get started on your attempts to keep up with the Joneses. You're the one who's constantly upgrading your wardrobe, splurging on the latest gadgets, and treating yourself to fancy dinners, all while your savings account gathers dust in the corner. But hey, you're not alone in this. In fact, you might just be part of a growing community of carpe diem enthusiasts, all of whom are more concerned with living their best life in the present than they are with planning for the future. 
It's like you've got a secret language where the mere mention of compound interest or emergency fund is enough to elicit a collective groan and a round of sympathetic nods. You're all in this together, bonded by your shared love of instant gratification and your collective inability to delay that sweet, sweet dopamine hit that comes with a new purchase. I know what you're thinking. But how do I break free from this cycle of living for the moment and start building real wealth? Well, the Stoics have got your back, my friend. As the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle once said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. In other words, the key to financial stability might just lie in cultivating a mindset of delayed gratification and long-term thinking. As the Roman Stoic philosopher Seneca reminds us, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. So instead of constantly chasing the latest shiny object and blowing your paycheck on impulse purchases, why not focus on taking small, consistent steps towards building a solid financial foundation? And let's not forget the wise words of the ancient Greek philosopher Plato, who encourages us to be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. In the context of your financial situation, this could mean learning to be more compassionate with yourself and your spending habits, rather than constantly berating yourself for your lack of financial discipline. As the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle once wrote, the universe is change, our life is what our thoughts make it. So instead of letting your tendency to live for the moment define you and hold you back, why not embrace the challenge and see it as an opportunity to grow and adapt? And let's not forget the wise words of the ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus, who reminds us that the only constant in life is change. In other words, the key to financial freedom might just lie in being willing to adapt and evolve your financial strategies as your circumstances and priorities change over time. So, the next time you find yourself tempted to blow your paycheck on the latest and greatest gadget or experience, take a deep breath and remember the words of the great philosophers. With a little bit of resilience, a whole lot of self-discipline, and a healthy dose of wisdom, you just might be able to turn your financial situation around. Eight, inflation sprinting while your earnings are stuck in a leisurely stroll. Inflation sprinting ahead like a cheetah sing on Red Bull, while your earnings are stuck in a leisurely stroll, barely keeping up with the pace of a hungover sloth. It's like you're playing a twisted game of financial catch-up, where the goalposts keep moving further and further away. And the only prize at the end is a lifetime supply of ramen noodles and generic brand toilet paper. While everyone else is busy watching their paychecks stretch further and further, you're over here feeling like you need a PhD in advanced budgeting just to afford the basics. It's like you've got a superpower for making your money disappear faster than a magician's rabbit. And the only trick you can't seem to master is the one where you actually manage to save a few bucks for a rainy day. You might just be part of a growing community of the financially challenged, all of whom are more familiar with the concept of paycheck to paycheck living than they are with the idea of actually having a retirement plan. It's a challenging situation, but the good news is you're not alone in this. But how do I break free from this vicious cycle of inflation outpacing my earnings and start building real wealth? Well, the Stoics have got your back, my friend. As the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu once said, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. In other words, the key to financial stability might just lie in cultivating a mindset of resilience and adaptability. As the ancient Greek philosopher Socrates reminds us, the unexamined life is not worth living. So instead of constantly lamenting the fact that your paycheck can't keep up with the rising cost of living, 
why not focus on exploring new income streams or finding ways to cut back on your expenses? And let's not forget the wise words of the ancient Indian philosopher Patanjali, who encourages us to practice and all is coming. In the context of your financial situation, this could mean taking small, consistent steps towards building a solid financial foundation rather than trying to achieve overnight success, as the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu once observed, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. In other words, the key to weathering the storm of inflation might just lie in cultivating a mindset of frugality and delayed gratification, rather than constantly chasing after the latest and greatest material possessions. And let's not forget the wise words of the ancient Greek philosopher Epicurus, who reminds us to simplify, simplify, simplify. In the context of your financial situation, this could mean learning to want less, rather than constantly trying to keep up with the ever-escalating cost of living. So the next time you find yourself staring at your paycheck, wondering how on earth you're going to make ends meet, take a deep breath, and remember the words of the great philosophers. With a little bit of resilience, a whole lot of self-discipline, and a healthy dose of wisdom, you just might be able to turn this inflation earnings gap into an opportunity to build a stronger, more sustainable financial future. 9. You've mastered the art of overspending on life's petite pleasures, turning every purchase into a pricey masterpiece. You've mastered the art of overspending on life's petite pleasures, turning every purchase into a pricey masterpiece. It's like you've got a knack for transforming a simple trip to the grocery store into a veritable spending spree worthy of a black tie gala. I mean, while everyone else is busy clipping coupons and scouring the sales racks, you're over here living your best life, swiping that credit card like it's going out of style. It's like you've got a sixth sense for sniffing out the most expensive version of every product, whether it's the organic, fair trade, artisanal avocado toast, or the limited edition, handcrafted, small batch kombucha. And let's not even get started on your pension for splurging on those little luxuries that just seem to spark joy. You're the one who can justify dropping 20 bucks on a single candle or $50 on a fancy pair of socks, all while your savings account gathers dust in the corner. It's like you've got a PhD in the art of financial self-indulgence, where every purchase is an opportunity to treat yourself to the finer things in life. Consequences be damned. You might just be part of a growing community of the overspenders, all of whom have a penchant for turning every mundane purchase into a high-end affair. It's a challenging situation, but the good news is, you're not alone in this. In fact, you and your fellow spendthrifts have formed this little support group, where you can commiserate over your inability to resist the temptation of that fancy latte or that designer handbag, all while dreaming about the day when you'll finally be able to afford a down payment on a house. But how do I break free from this cycle of overspending and start building real wealth? Well, the Stoics have got your back, my friend. As the ancient Greek philosopher Socrates once said, the unexamined life is not worth living. In other words, the key to financial stability might just lie in cultivating a mindset of self-awareness and introspection. As the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu reminds us, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So instead of constantly giving in to the temptation of those petite pleasures, why not focus on taking small, consistent steps towards building a solid financial foundation? And let's not forget the wise words of the ancient Indian philosopher Chanagya, who encourages us to save a part of your income, no matter how small, before you start spending it. In the context of your financial situation, this could mean learning to want less, 
rather than constantly chasing after the latest and greatest material possessions. As the ancient Greek philosopher Epicurus once observed, it is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more that is poor. In other words, the key to weathering the storm of overspending might just lie in cultivating a sense of contentment and gratitude for what you have, rather than constantly berating yourself for your perceived financial shortcomings. And let's not forget the wise words of the ancient Chinese philosopher Confucius, who reminds us that it does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. So the next time you find yourself tempted to splurge on that fancy latte or that designer handbag, take a deep breath and remember the words of the great philosophers. With a little bit of resilience, a whole lot of self-discipline and a healthy dose of wisdom, you just might be able to turn your overspending habits into a springboard for a more financially secure future. 10. You're the maestro of payment plans, orchestrating a symphony of spending that hits all the wrong notes financially. You're the maestro of payment plans, orchestrating a symphony of spending that hits all the wrong notes financially. It's like you've got a PhD in the art of buy now, pay later. You can transform the simplest of purchases into a veritable financial concerto, complete with a never-ending chorus of monthly installments and late fees. I mean, while everyone else is busy saving up their hard-earned cash and paying for things outright, you're over here conducting a virtuosic performance of credit card swiping and online checkout buttons. It's like you've got a sixth sense for sniffing out the most enticing financing options, whether it's the interest-free 12-month payment plan on that shiny new gadget or the low monthly payments on that designer handbag that's been calling your name. And let's not even get started on your pension for layaway. You're the one who can justify putting that $200 pair of shoes on a payment plan, all while your savings account gathers dust in the corner. It's like you've got a knack for turning every purchase into a high-stakes financial gamble, where the only winners are the credit card companies and the buy-now-pay-later apps. But hey, you're not alone in this. In fact, you might just be part of a growing community of the payment plan addicts, all of whom have a penchant for turning every mundane purchase into a drawn-out financial saga. It's a challenging situation to be sure, but the good news is, you're not the only one struggling to break free from the siren song of those tempting financing options. But how do I break free from this cycle of payment plan addiction and start building real wealth? Well, the Stoics have got your back, my friend. As the ancient Greek philosopher Socrates once said, the unexamined life is not worth living. In other words, the key to financial stability might just lie in cultivating a mindset of self-awareness and introspection. As the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu reminds us, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So instead of constantly giving in to the temptation of those enticing financing options, why not focus on saving up and paying for things in cash? even if it means waiting a little longer to make that purchase. And let's not forget the wise words of the ancient Indian philosopher Patanjali, who encourages us to practice and all is coming. In the context of your financial situation, this could mean taking small, consistent steps towards building a solid financial foundation rather than trying to achieve overnight success. As the ancient Greek philosopher Plato once observed, be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. In other words, the key to breaking free from your payment plan addiction might just lie in cultivating a sense of self-compassion and understanding, rather than constantly berating yourself for your perceived financial shortcomings. And let's not forget the wise words of the ancient Chinese philosopher Chuang Tzu, who reminds us to simplify, simplify, simplify. In the context of your financial situation, 
This could mean learning to want less, rather than constantly trying to keep up with the ever-escalating cost of living. So, the next time you find yourself tempted to put that new gadget or that designer outfit on a payment plan, take a deep breath and remember the words of the great philosophers. With a little bit of resilience, a whole lot of self-discipline, and a healthy dose of wisdom, you just might be able to turn your payment plan addiction into a springboard for a more financially secure future.